Why hello there! Welcome to my sample series. This is why I showcase games running on enhanced or next-gen consoles in 4K and or HDR. Except today, this game I'm going to be doing is not going to be either one of those. Now this video is going to be recorded in 4K, but this game is going to be running at uh, 1440p natively, the internal resolution, and it's going to be utilizing a feature that um, I have yet to feature, great sentence there, on this, uh, on this series of mine, Ray Tracing, RTX. This is Control, Ultimate Edition, running on the Xbox Series X in graphics mode, which is 1440p, 30 frames a second, with ray tracing, something that we didn't really, I didn't really think consoles, even of this generation, was, was going to be capable, were going to be capable of doing. But here we are, and I am uh, going to jump into my um, completed save file here, and I'm just going to spend a little time showing off this game in said graphics mode. Now this is a game that I featured on this channel before in both streaming and um, my sample series, but that was on the Xbox One X. This being Microsoft's newest console that I got last year. Um, it doesn't quite have as much um, pizzazz as I'd hoped. I'd hoped for a higher resolution and better, higher frame rate as well as ray tracing, but I guess you can't have everything. And maybe for whatever reason, um, I suspect it has something to do with the graphics card chipsets in these consoles being AMD's first attempt at a ray tracing capable graphics card. That may have something to do with it. It's having more difficulty with uh, this stuff than it would be if this were um, NVIDIA supplied chipsets. But regardless, here we are. I am in a central executive. Like I said, this is my completed save file, for the most part completed. I just finished uh, my the last of my daily long play streams of this game, and I'm just going to spend some time showing off this game. I have a few um, areas I want to hit up. I have a few um, things I want to do, and let let's get going on it. First of all, you might notice the ray tracing well, reflections here on the ceilings, on the walls, on the glass. That's probably the biggest thing. Let's let's cause a little mayhem right out of the gate. Yep, that's this game's. Uh, physics system at work, something that I did not really take advantage much of when I first played this game about a year and a half ago. But you can definitely mess stuff up in this game. Look at that. It does run a lot better on this new system, that is one thing I can say for sure. Although it has had some uh, stability issues, it has uh, the game has crashed or frozen up completely a, a couple of times, much more than I would have expected. Although that may have been an issue um, that I had when I originally played this game back in the day as well. And by back in the day, I mean about a year and a half ago. There I am, there's my portrait, not loading into its high-res mode for some reason. There we go, that's better. Let's head to my office. I will say the reflections, especially on these glass windows, have they have been particularly effective at confusing me at times, thinking that um, there was someone coming towards me when there's really my own character's reflection. Now, I've yet to figure out if the light coming from here is coming from a very 
distant window to the outside or if it's like connected to the astral plane somehow I don't know but that is the main source of this uh, office's illumination so yeah it gets a little framey at times But all in all, this game definitely runs a lot better than it did. As it should. Huh, the hotline is gone. That's odd. Indestructible glass, huh? So yeah, I'm just gonna spend some time in this video showcasing some of the hopefully more interesting looking parts of the game. And one of the areas I definitely want to get to um, is an area that looks particularly nice. In fact, that's in where I'm gonna go to next as soon as I can get back to the nearest um, control point. Which is the one where I started out. It's the inverted black pyramid that represents the board, or at least uh, a part of the board anyway, the part that the board controls. Right. I'm going to go to the Black Rock Quarry. Because I think that's one of the best looking areas of the game, if not the best. Although it does not necessarily show off the ray tracing uh, feature all that well. You can buy the quick loading times. Thanks to the Xbox Series X's internal M2 storage drive. Look, we're in the basement and yet somehow there's outer space. I bet this would look a lot better if this game ran at a higher resolution. Something along the lines of native 4K. Yep, I can fly. Deal with it. <laughs> Deal with these guys here. Yes, I did uh, play this game with the uh, ray tracing mode on. I've always preferred better visuals over better frame rate. Because that's the kind of person I am. How? Probably not the smartest thing to do, considering those things explode when they die. There's another enemy somewhere around here. This I ah, these things are chasing me. Best bet is just to fly over them. Actually, I find the best way of dealing with multiple ones of these flying at you at once is just pick up multiple objects and throw them at them. Okay, that nearly killed me. All right, let's get out of here. Go to the next area of interest, if I can. Research, how's that sound?
Here we are, the research division of the Federal Bureau of Control. The ceaseless chanting of, I guess, the hiss? I'm not entirely sure. No doubt there's some documentation somewhere I've read in this game, somewhere along the way, that goes into some amount of detail. Except for the key part, which is always going to be redacted. <laughs> the black bar is covering the text you actually want to see. That is how this game rolls. I only get access to that stuff just because I'm the director. Yeah, this is a nice looking game. I wish the game ran at a higher resolution. Because I feel like this system is being underutilized at only 1440p. Unless ray tracing is just a lot more taxing than I thought. But even if I were in um, performance mode at 60 frames a second without the ray tracing, it would still only be 1440p. Thinking if I ever am able to get an RTX 3080, it'd be interesting to get this game on Steam or something just to see its true potential. Because as improved as it is here, I can still tell it's definitely not living up to what it could be. Here. Pull up a couch. Oops, missed. This is my go-to weapon, by the way. Oh, missed there. Because on most enemies, it's good enough for a one-shot kill. Which is something I highly value. <laughs> Right, let's uh let's keep looking for stuff. It's not gonna necessarily be an extensive tour of this uh oldest house, but we'd like to show off some more areas. Let's go to containment sector. Mm -hmm. I love the detail that this game has, even with small stuff like these computers. I still don't understand why this computer has two screens. One built into it and then a dedicated monitor on top of it. I, and how come the one built in is capable of doing more colors than the dedicated monitor? Five and a half inch floppy disk drive, which is disconnected from the computer. <laughs> and notice the computer is disconnected from power as well. Ah, uh, okay, maybe that's not something you should be noticing. And what are these things sticking out the back? Are those expansion cards? Actually look like RAM cartridges or maybe game cartridges. I don't know. This is the type of stuff I notice here, people. Alright, 
do a little combating. Huh? Started a fire. Good job, me. First day on the job as a director. I've already started a fire. I'm good at my job. Got this weird sink slash toilet uh, set up here. Oh, this looks like a prison cell or something. Oh, yeah, I should probably focusing more on the real-time ray tracing. Look at that. You can actually see reflections, not just of the character, but of the environment. See right that? And then you can see the offices and the people hanging up there. That is an actual real-time reflection of what's going on in the actual environment here. It's a, I guess it's a fairly subtle thing, but it is the reason why this game is not running at a high resolution. As it is quite taxing. And it is pervasive. Everywhere, everything has effects like this, even if they're not as pronounced as what you see in these windows. And being a government office building, it has a lot of reflective surface in it, surfaces in it. I mean, you got the shiny floor, the glass. I guess the one area which it isn't so visible is the concrete walls here. I think this is some sort of um, airport um, departure thing, or obviously a list of cities here that looks like something you'd seen like the movie The Terminal. Budapest, Barcelona, Casablanca, Detroit. <laughs> Tokyo. Now if we go over here, this map makes even less sense. The only thing I can say for certain is that it is a map of the United States with each of the state's uh, state capitals. But the meaning of these lines and symbols, I'm not entirely sure. Are these where um, all the various different satellite offices of the Bureau are located? I don't know. Why are some cities lit up red and others green? Don't know. Is there any documentation I may have overlooked within the game that might explain this? Probably. There's a storage room here. I always show the most interesting stuff in my videos. <laughs> Alright. Let's uh, go down here and fast travel to the Panopticon. And specifically the upper floor of it. Uh, that was uh, an example of the game crashing on me. <laughs> Oops. Alright, well, I guess we'll have an unscheduled uh, showcase of how quickly the system um, can load into a game. Yeah, like I said, this uh, game has been surprisingly unstable. I guess it uh, crashed right after it loaded me into the Panopticon. As annoying as that might be, as annoying as that should be, that was still faster than what the loading time was on the original on the game when I originally played it a year and a half ago. Okay, so the Panopticon is basically a storage containment area for altered items. 
and basically keep them contained. And it is a giant space with many layers to it, of which I've only actually been to some of them. That's because I've yet to figure out how to access the highest areas of it yet. Okay, there's still enemies nearby. Ah, here we go. Still more? All right. See if we can go find them. There we go. And that is how you deal with that. Yeah, I've, unfortunately, I've yet to figure out how to get up to the level 6 area. Because I can't quite make that, even from on top of this. As you can see, it doesn't go quite high enough. And believe me, I spent quite a bit of time trying to figure this out as well. It just always seems to be barely out of reach. And the um, ability to um, telekinesis, use telekinesis on objects is not nearly... F your control over that is not nearly fine enough to allow you to stack stuff on top of each other. Build a platform for which to fly higher. And it's just not that kind of game. Here's some of the um, altered items, which are different from objects of power. They don't grant you abilities when you um, cleanse them. They're just um, items that have been altered to behave erratically. Like here's a birthday balloon, for example. The other one was a swan boat. That is a water cooler. Stating the obvious. Which is exactly what someone does when they have nothing interesting to say. This is a thing from Half-Life in Half-Life 2. Maybe you recognize it. <laughs> That is the security cell where the main character's brother was being kept. Uh, spoiler alert, I guess. Uh, this is a completed save file, so you may run into some story-based spoilage. See, I'm just barely out of reach there. Huh, apparently I found a hidden location here and got an ability point as a result. Maybe this is how you get into that area, those upper areas. Ah, this is stuff from the um, Alan Wake based DLC called AWE.
communicating with me via the hotline. And that must be one of the thermoses you collect in the um, Alan Wake game. So yeah, I found another little cutscene, another little hotline scene, and a uh, some more documentation. That's basically what this game is best at. The um, weird, moody atmosphere that it creates with little details like that. That is this game's strength. The combat is good. The visuals are good. All uh, the individual elements that you normally find in games, video games, are good. But that's what it's best at. That stuff right there. A strangely walled off section here. whole lot of particle physics going on in this game. In fact, it's kind of, might be hard to notice, but as you walk through this um, hiss smoke, uh, it actually um, reacts to you. It actually has uh, fluid dynamics at work or something. I don't know the exact terminology, but a more modern um, particle physics space system. Ambient occlusion, maybe? Yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not um, smart enough, or I don't remember the actual term that they used. That's a weird-looking chair. Someone's hand. I would never sit in something like that. Not least of which because it's an altered item. These are actually altered items that I had to tame in order to put them back in their cell into containment. A letter. And another locked door. That's great. Christmas tree here. Baby stroller. So yeah, um, I'm coming up on the half hour point in this video. And I, I think I covered up as much as I really need to in order to get the point across, I think. So yeah, I'm just I'm going to call it a video right here. Um, but before I do... I'm going to take a moment to thank you for watching. I appreciate it um, when people take time out of their day to watch my streams and videos, whether in live or in archive form. Just as a quick reminder, I do a stream almost every day, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time from Sunday through Thursday. I call it my daily long play stream. And as of this uh, video, I'm going to start uh, the... As of the recording of this video, I'm going to start my long-awaited playthrough of Persona 5 Strikers on the PlayStation 4. I do occasional streams on Monday night, retro or otherwise, on a, of a variety sort, 8 p.m., and occasional 4K and or HDR uploads like this on Friday. So yeah, it's been a while since I've done one of these. Ideally, I'd like to do this on a more regular basis, but a lot of it comes down to time, energy, and whether I have something interesting and worthwhile to actually record and upload footage of. But I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I guess leave a comment or, or in, the, uh, in the comments below if you want to see more footage of this game, perhaps seeing it run in the 60 FPS mode, 
or maybe seeing some other areas. But that's going to do it for me. And until next time, take it easy.